Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live once again on my favorite day of the week because it's the end of the week and it's the day I get to do my photography masterclass. So just let me get a couple windows open here, make sure we're live everywhere, and we'll kick off with today's topic, which is going to be photo respir restoration, <laughs> respiration, photo restoration. Hopefully the photos don't need respiration. All right. Um, so for those of you who are new to the Photography Masterclass or the Masterclass series in general, uh, every Friday we do these classes when we're available like next Friday we, we're off but when we're available the evangelists do their master classes in their respective um, fields so you'll see design Photoshop motion graphics from Jason uh, Kyle Webster doing drawing Howard Pinsky doing UX UI design so it's a full day of classes and you get those classes at b.net slash Adobe live so if you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, wherever you may be watching this from, that's awesome. But just keep in mind that the chat, uh, so like Nikki, I see over on LinkedIn uh, morning, the chat that I'm going to be paying attention to once we kick in is going to be um, at b.net slash Adobe Live. So that URL up there in the corner. All right, so with that said, um, today we're going to take a look at some photo restoration techniques. And since this is a photography masterclass, this is, photogra this is photo, photo restoration techniques for photographers. A lot of P's in that. Um, so that means that this is not hardcore restoring photos that are 90% gone and you're having to redraw them pixel by pixel. That's a whole nother class of photo restoration, and that's not what we're going to be doing today. What we're going to be doing today instead is someone brings you a photo or you have your own photos, and there's scratches, there's there tears, there may be pieces of the photo missing, and you need to restore them, but it's not a complete redraw from scratch or repaint from scratch. So if that's um, if you're looking for that complete, like there's nothing left but a hand <laughs> and I need, to, I need to put the entire person back in. That's not what this is. You, you should probably go take some professional classes uh, that's, that concentrate on that because that is hours, weeks, months of work and, and um, also getting uh, uh, practice in on that kind of restoration. So it's not that. It's not completely destroyed photos, but it is photos that uh, could use a lot of help and old photos and we're going to talk about how to get them in the computer in the first place and then how to uh, restore them. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, so uh, I'll leave this up for a second longer, but just again, if you want to, if you want me to see your chat after this moment, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live and um, you can log in with your Adobe ID which is free to create if you don't already have one, um, which I would be hard pressed if you were using Photoshop that you don't already have one, but log in with your Adobe ID, which is free to create if you don't already have one, and you can uh, you can participate in the chat. Otherwise, you can just hang out watching where, you, where you're gonna watch. All right, so, um, yeah, so Mike, for example, says, I have, I have images that are not physically damaged, but the colors are way off. And uh, Clifton says, I needed this class on Wednesday, and Shari's saying, I have a lot of those photos with dog bites. So. That's the kind of stuff we're going to talk about. So let's dive in. I'm going to switch over to Photoshop where I've got um, the latest version of Photoshop running. Some people ask that sometimes. Like, what version of Photoshop are you running? I'm running the one from three years ago. No, kidding. I would always be running the latest one. The latest available public one uh, in this case. So with that said, uh, this is the latest Photoshop. Um, and I have some examples I want to show you that I've done of my own photos and then we'll dive into the technique. So let's do some before and afters. Um, here's a photo, my dad passed away in 2016. Uh, so this was a photo that someone sent me in the family. It was at my grandmother's house, his mother's house. And um, not horrible, like not horribly bad shape. <laughs> I always love when people use scotch tape on the actual photo, like, like instead of putting the tape like you know, making a loop and putting it behind the photo. They actually tape the photo into the photo album. So you see a lot of these yellow tape strips. 
Um, and, and then there, there will be sometimes like, for example, parts of the photo are missing down at the very bottom where his foot's being cropped off. I didn't, I don't even think I bothered doing that because the foot was close enough. And, um, the photo itself, uh, usually these old photos will have a white border around them because that's, that was traditional prints back in the day. And what you want to do to get this in now, this particular one, I think I scanned, I think I brought a, like a portable desktop scanner, uh, with me to my grandmother's house. And I, I think I scanned this one, but today I wouldn't even bother with a scanner. I don't even know if I like where my scanner is or even if I have software for it anymore. What I would do today is because, and the reason I say I wouldn't bother with a scanner is because even your phone will most likely have a higher resolution than your typical scanners do for, you know, unless you're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a scanner. So uh, just taking a good photo with your camera, whether it's your phone or a professional camera, is usually going to yield a much higher resolution result. Now, uh, obviously, you want to put it on a table where you can shoot straight down on it, or if it's you know if it's posted somewhere where you can shoot straight on to it. However, that is whether it's laying flat or straight on. Um, and you also want to make sure that you can eliminate any glare that might be coming from a light source, like a lamp or a light or whatever. You just want to make sure there's no glare on the photo, because then that would be something else you have to remove. So this is the photo I started with. And this is the restore. So that was uh, going from this to this. And I actually did this back in the day uh, around 2016 uh, on when we first started doing these live streams. So it was my Photoshop, my photography show. I forgot what it was called. It was back when we were streaming on Twitch. So this actual uh, restoration, you can, it, like it took me a couple hours. I did it, you know, it took my time doing it on the class because that's back when our classes were two to three hours long. Uh, you can go back on my YouTube channel and watch me do this photo from scratch. So I actually showed the restoration of that photo. Now we don't have two to three hours today, so we're not going to, we're going to do that kind of extensive re, retouch today. Uh, but here, here's another one. This is one, this, I think this was the first one I ever tried. This is my uh, parents' wedding day. And uh, again, as you can see, this is the condition of the photo. And uh, this, this took some time to just even start to think about the things that I would want to do to get this right, to get this to look good. So uh, same thing. Uh, this one, I, I don't think I did this. Maybe I did this one live. I don't think I did. But just taking time, and this is what I ended up with. So uh, again, going from that to this. And uh, some, some, just some things to think about, like there's a whole bunch of scratches and, and over here on the left side of the car that don't add any value, even if they were restored. Like they're not adding anything to the photo. So in that case, I just cropped it a little tighter. So I just would have less work to do on that side of the photo. And then, um, like the, the tire down here on, on the bottom, that took some time to get that just right. And I think, I, yeah, I didn't bother. I just cropped it a little more because it, it's not about the car. It's about the people in, in front of the car or standing next to the car. And I don't even know who this is sitting in the car. Uh, maybe one day I'll find out who that actually was in the car itself. But anyway, um, this, was the, this was the restoration uh, from that particular photo. Now, the one that probably took me the most time, not from a restoration standpoint, but I wanted to do something extra. I, I like the photo wasn't that bad, but I wanted to go in and um, which YouTube video did you post on this restoration? I need all the help I can get. Uh, sorry, you have to go way back to like 2016 on my YouTube channel and my Photoshop um, playlist. And it's, it's probably called something like photo restoration. Uh, just go back and look around that time frame and you'll find it. 2016, 2017. All right. But anyway, this photo, which as you can see was uh, low resolution because I think I scanned it. So back when the scanners weren't that good. And uh, again, not that bad. Like the condition of the photo wasn't bad. I noticed the, the funny thing. I don't know if the photographer ran out of background. Like this looks like wallpaper or some kind of background but it was missing from that side of the photo. And I just thought that always looked odd. So uh, I just went in and uh, not only restored it, but this was the one that I wanted to envision if it were in color. So this is one that not only taking the time to restore it, but also colorize it. And I still like that was back day one trying to colorize photos and I was not great at it. 
So uh, there were parts of the photo I missed. And then I think um, Deb, uh, which is a friend of ours, she she attempted this. This I can't remember if this is my version of a colorization or hers, but we both kind of colorized this photo and the results were very similar. So this might actually even be Deb's colorization. Uh, once you restore in black and white, do you color them? So Ozzy just asked that question and uh, sometimes, like this one, I did. Now, the other thing that always bugged me about this particular photo was if we go to the original, my mom in most of her photos, that's my mom right here, her eyes were closed. And just, just like, even after, even after I spent weeks colorizing this thing and getting it back to normal, it was like, oh, but her eyes are closed. It just drove me crazy because it's not like, um, you know, if one eye is closed, you can duplicate the other eye over and use that eye that's 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 open still. But both eyes are closed, and and like I didn't have another like it wasn't like a photographer today would have fifty frames of this. So you know, like find the one where her eyes weren't closed and use that use those eyes. I didn't have that option, so I had to go to just a completely different photo and uh, use her eyes from that photo. Uh, to put in, in place. So that was that was that took some time to kind of get that right, get the color right, get everything right, get the eyes right, and get it to the point to where I liked it. Uh, no, I wasn't born yet. I'm <laughs> not in this image. Uh, this is my aunt who was who passed away unfortunately last last year. She was 70 years old, so she's a kid here. So no, I wasn't born yet. I'm not in this photo. Um, Anyway, so grandparents, great grandparents in this photo, aunts, uncles, cousins. Uh, these, like I said, this is my aunt who's a little girl down in, in the corner down here, and she was just past at seventy years old. This is a cousin of mine, and he's uh, in his seven sixties, seventies, seventies, I believe. So yeah, this is before my time. Okay, so that's kind of the goal: is to basically get a photo that starts out like not great and make it look better. You, you may not be able to make it look perfect, but you can certainly improve upon it. Take a photo like this, make it look better. So that's the kind of goal that we're gonna be working on today. All right, so now let's go ahead and close up these uh, samples. My work in progress that I've been doing over the years, and let's close our before and after, and let's, in our group here, let's get to our restore. Now, I just have, um, none of these are mine. Actually, one of these is actually Victoria's, but none, the rest are not mine. They are actually none of these are mine. I, I, these are not like pictures I've taken or or people or um, relatives that have sent me pictures to restore. Uh, the vast majority are Adobe stock. So, and, and by the way, and that's the hard thing. It's hard to find a sample photo to restore unless you go to your own photos or your own family's photos because if it's on Adobe stock, Chances are the person already restored it. Like that—that that was the whole point. They didn't—they don't put up photos for you to download that are messed up. In other words, so that—that that was one of the challenges was just even finding photos that weren't personal photos that I could restore. All right, so let's start off with this this one of this kid here. So just two pictures side by side, one in better condition than the other one. Um, and, uh, this was just, they were laid flat and photographed and this is an Adobe stock photo. And, uh, the one on the right hand side, obviously looks like it could use more work. All right. So just for the sake of the before and after and the people, the, the duplicate, the background crowd, that's what I call them. I'll go ahead and duplicate the background, uh, just so they don't freak out and let's go ahead and now start to work. All right. So first and foremost, um, Ask you'd have to ask yourself, and this is a lot of photo restoration. Is that he's on hold? <laughs> Good one, I like that. Yeah, uh, a, a lot of uh, I gotta be able to look at this picture again. A lot of what people spend a lot of time on is doing things to uh, photos that try to get the photo back to its original state. And it may not have been a great photo to begin with. Does that make sense from a photography standpoint? I don't mean condition. I mean from a photography standpoint. Let me show you another example. We're going to start on the kid, but I just want to show you this one. Like this one. It, it, it's okay. It's not a great photo to begin with. But if those people are important to you, if that dog's important to you, then yeah, you want it restored. But what I mean by that is, like, do you need the window? <laughs> do you need all this stuff? If this is not... If this is not a, a huge characteristic to the story, 
then I would say this is also your opportunity to recompose the shot, like to get rid of elements that don't matter, if that makes sense, and um, concentrate on the things that do matter, the people, the dogs, so forth and so on. Those things matter. Uh, this building, I'm, I'm going to guess, probably doesn't mean a lot because you're only seeing a, a small part of it. You're seeing a window uh, that really is going to take you time to restore this window, time to get this window looking just right, and no one's going to care because they only care about the people. That's what I'm trying to say. So in a case like that, you might want to take that opportunity to recompose it. Uh, yeah, that's a big pup. I agree. All right. So anyway, let's go back to this. Uh, so back to this photo. So what I mean by that is, uh, do we need this background that it was on, that it this book that it was stapled to or pasted into? No. So I would crop both of these photos separately. And if I if they really wanted them side by side, then I would go ahead and composite them side by side. Like, in other words, I would not spend a lot of time trying to restore the pages because they, they, they don't mean anything to me. So if I were trying to keep both of these photos, I would crop them separately. I'd open it up the second time, crop it again, or duplicate it, crop it. That way I wouldn't have to worry about the pages of the book. I also, I get rid of some of these edges that way too that don't matter. All right, but anyway, we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna worry about the rest restoration part. So let's go to the photo that, that needs more work. Let's go to this one on this side. And um, prior to the healing brushes, you used to do a lot of cloning in a situation like this because you've got this long scratch going right through the middle of the person's face and you would have to start cloning uh, above it or below it into it to, to remove, a, remove a scratch like this. Luckily, you don't have to do that anymore because you've got um, the healing brushes. So you, you still can, by the way, I'm not saying that the, the clone stamp tool is awesome, but you don't need it as much as you used to. So let's go ahead and uh, grab the, the those two healing brushes. Uh, oh, I've got them not separated. I've got them separated here. So there's a spot healing brush and then there's the healing brush. So what's the difference between, they both look like Band-Aids. The, the one that I use the most is the Band-Aid with a circle on it because the reason I use this tool the most is because I don't have to think about where it's picking up from. It's automatically picking up from the surrounding pixels. The other one works more like the clone stamp tool where you hold down your option or alt key and sample first where you want it to pick up from and it will use that. That's cool if you need to sample a specific area. And that may be more important if you're doing restoration because you may be trying to get an area that is clean over to an area that is, isn't. Whereas like the scratch might be running through some bad pixels to begin with. And so you might want to use the healing brush in that case. So spot healing to brush, healing brush, depending on what you need. In this case, the healing brush should be fine. So I, I try to make my brush no bigger than it needs to be. So maybe slightly bigger than the, the thing I'm, I'm, I'm healing. So in this case, the scratch. And I don't try and do it all at once. Like, like I could have just started at the top of the photo and go all the way down. And, and I end up usually with heal, healing that I don't like when I do it that way. So I do it in pieces just because I think it works better as a tool when it, when it doesn't have to calculate a lot at one time. Now, in this case, this is one of those cases where the healing brush might be better because while I'm trying to heal one scratch, it's using the other scratch to pull from. So it's not going away. So for example, if I do this one, it might work. Nope, see it's still pulling in the other one. So let's undo, undo, put those back. And now let's switch over to the other healing brush. And let's make the brush smaller. And I'm gonna hold down the option or alt key and say sample from right below the scratch. And now when I do it, it goes away because it's not picking up from the other scratch, it's picking up from where I told it to. So if I go up here, hold down the option or alt key and click, and then I come down here and start healing, that's what it's using to pull from. But you gotta be, then you have to be more careful, especially on hair, that you pick up the right hairs because if you're off a little, then it's gonna look like you're off a little. So it just depends on what you want. So I might use, here's what I would do. I would use the healing brush to get rid of one of them, because then that's you know easier than trying to use it for both. And then I use the regular spot healing brush to get rid of the other one because the other one's gone now. So it's not pulling from the other one. Now, if they're close enough together, you can just use a bigger brush. You could try that. And away you go. 
All right, so let's go in. And, and I'm not gonna do all of these photos. Uh, well, I'm not gonna do everything to all of these photos because of time, because a lot of what I'm doing is just rinse and repeat. You just would keep doing what I'm doing through until you're done. So let's get into some examples where you have to do more things as opposed to, oh, just keep, you know, keep brushing the photo until you got all the scratches gone. That's an obvious one. You would just keep doing that. All right, so on his face here, uh, again, just smaller pieces until I've got it pretty much gone. All right, so keep working. That you would, in this in this example, you would just keep doing it until you got rid of all the scratches. Same thing on his clothes here. Work smaller, smaller is better in re restoration than trying to do big giant brush, big giant brushes and big giant brush strokes, because then your retouch will look more obvious. All right, so that just a couple quick things there. This is our before. That's our after, before, after. And uh, when I do the before and after, I can still see a little bit of that trace of that line right here. So I just work on it a little bit more until I got it. I might even switch to the patch tool and just patch out like a, a bigger section of that. Just so, uh, again, no one's gonna notice it, but I know it's there. So I would just maybe patch a little bit up, more of that out uh, so that it's not as obvious that you, now I'm seeing this. So you just, you're gonna constantly see things that again, only you will notice because you know what it used to look like. Um, but again, just take your time. All right, so on a case like this, this, this would be what I would consider an easy re restore. Like this is, this is not horribly damaged. It's in, the photos are in pretty good condition. The scratches aren't like, like um, surgery. So I don't have to do a lot. I don't have to do a ton of work on this photo. Do some cropping, sharpening, Maybe adjust the tones a little bit because his eye sockets are kind of dark. That's about it. You're, you're pretty much done at this point. All right, so let's close this one. Let me make sure I've not missed any questions before I close it. All right. Would you recommend use an empty layer? Uh, would you recommend to use an empty layer and sample all the layers? I don't, but you could. Like So, so let, let's get this. Let's. I go over this over and over and over again throughout, throughout anytime I'm using Photoshop, these questions come up. The reason that, um, who's asked, who asked that question? The reason that Sean asked that question is because layers were always given to us as a way back. In other words, if I mess up, if I wanna change something, if I change my mind, having a layer to go back to is golden because, oh, then I can just, go back to the layer before, go back to another layer and redo it and so forth and so on. And I highly recommend doing all of those things if you're that person. If you're that person that says, well, if I, if I heal this and I don't like it, by it being on its own layer, it'd be easier to just throw that layer away and do it again, by all means. Create an empty layer, sample all layers and heal on that empty layer. Because then you're going to have all the little skin pieces you healed on a layer that you can do whatever you want with after. If that's you, by all means do it. So I'm never going to discourage you from adding more layers, duplicating layers, um, you know, going layer crazy if that's what you like, if that's what you, makes you feel comfortable, by all means do it. I, I don't do it because uh, just from my own practice, just from my own, it's, it's rare that having all those extra layers has ever helped me. Like, cause of the kinds of work, kind of work I do and going back, like it's just, it would, if I mess up that bad, <laughs> just, it'd just be easier for me to start over than it would be to delete that one layer and, and redo that one little piece again. Also, I'm the client usually. So it's, it's I, I don't have someone who's being super nitpicky who says, oh, fix that ear. And oh, dang, I wish I had that layer to go back to that ear. Uh, so if you are any of those things, yes, create all those layers. Yes, work with smart objects. Yes, make duplicates of everything. Absolutely. So, uh, does that make sense? All right, uh, so I'm not gonna save this. See, that's what I mean. I like, why well, create all that for something I'm not even gonna save. All right, next up, <laughs> let's go on and uh, let's get to, uh, I'm gonna do this one, but I just wanna show a technique on this one first. Um, so this is um, parent, or, or Victoria's parents when they were super young. 
And the problem with this photo is that you have huge parts of the photo missing, not in the, not the people, but just the photo itself. Like this was like obviously cut into kind of some kind of shape, probably in some kind of book. And, and it's like, it's so it's missing like a large part of his shoulder and his arm. And up here is just torn. So it's missing a part of her hat. And you end up with situations like this where this is this is not going to be an easy one because I, I, like it's already as tight as I want it. Like I don't want it any tighter, so I don't want to crop any more off like that. Like other than the bottom edge, I don't or in the top edge maybe, but I don't want to really crop too much because it, it is what it is. So what I would do in this case is I would crop just the, the two little pieces I mentioned to get rid of first. And so let's go to our crop tool. Let's get out of this 16 by 9 aspect ratio, clear it, and let's go up a little, and we're already down a little, and we can come into the sides a little, and this, this part doesn't matter, so I would go in there. Now, it's also a little crooked, so let's straighten that crop out a little bit, something like that, where we're just getting rid of the parts that don't matter. Because again, we, we, we have so much that's already gone. We don't want it really any tighter than that. All right, so now I'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and crop that. And so now I'm left with the dilemma of what about the other pieces that are missing? Uh, so you could just say, oh, I'm gonna create a new diamond shape and that way it will make sense. But let's say you, you didn't have that option. Let's say you need to restore it. So I'm gonna um, duplicate the layer for those who freak out when I don't. Let's turn off the bottom one. All right, and let's uh, let's take let's create a new layer below it, an empty layer. And now that I got that new layer below it, what I want to do is, is is for me it's easier to envision things if I can see them. So in other words, instead of me seeing all that white space, it'd be easier if I could see the same color in the background, even though his shoulders missing and part of her hat's missing. So let's go ahead and uh, grab the eyedropper because I want the same color. And I'll grab the eyedropper and just sample like a, a decent color of this background. So let me be right about there. All right, so now I'm on the empty layer and I'm just gonna hold down Option or Alt and hit Delete or Backspace and fill that, oh, I forgot that's actually filled with white. Um, all right, let's do it this way. Undo, don't need that empty layer. We're gonna do it this way. Go in and select Subject. No, yeah, let's do Select Subject. That's, that should be interesting. So I was going to do it a different way, but I just decided on this way just now. All right, select subject. That's cool. Now I'm going to do an inverse. Select everything but them. And now I'm going to... I don't know that I'm going to like that because of... I don't know that I'm going to like that. But anyway, let, let's... Uh, no, I don't want to do it that way. Undo. Undo. Select subject. Go back. Hang on. I'm, I'm making decisions as we go. That's that's the problem. So let me go back to inverse and let me mask. Great. And now let's go to that empty layer that I got rid of. Fill that empty layer with that color. And then we kind of get huh, left out a spot there, but we can go ahead and mask it. And we're, so I just kind of want a neutral background that's the whole photo. So now we're, we're actually, I don't even need to fill this in because this is the problem is that his shoulder's missing. So what I could do to kind of just fake that for a second is I go to that layer that's missing the shoulder. And now that it's missing the shoulder, I'll just go in and, and grab like a lasso and just select that whole piece that's missing. Something like that. All right, so now I'll grab the eyedropper because the background is a different color than his jacket he's wearing. Now I'll sample that jacket color and we'll just go ahead and fill that in. All right. Now that's going to fill it in as a solid color. And so it's not going to match the same texture as his jacket, but that's okay because now that I got the color in there and I can kind of see what I'm doing, now I can use the clone stamp tool. Not that big. And I can start to grab some of that texture from the original. So let's grab some of that texture and we start painting that in. 
And it's okay if I'm getting duplicates or that line, it's okay. I can go ahead and take that back out. And that way I end up with that same texture in that area. All right, so now, and you, you didn't have to put the brown in first, it just helped, helped me visualize it. All right, so now that we're, we got that, I could then go in and decide, like that is the edge of his coat. So that, line, that white line kind of makes sense, but this other lighter line does not. Uh, so I could just grab my patch tool, select that area, and just patch it so it blends in better. Not these two dark spots though. So that way, you kind of basically gave him his shoulder back, but, but in a better way. Now, the same thing for her hat. Like, her, her hat is missing the other side of it. And I could draw the hat and fill it in with that side, or I could just take the hat that's already there and duplicate it. So, for example, let's just go ahead and just make a selection of this area. It may not be big enough. And our hat's got like this little pin on the top of it. So let's duplicate that. Command J puts, puts that on its own layer. Let's move it over. Let's um, free transform Command T, PC Control T. Let's flip it. And let's rotate it. Yeah, something like that. I would say right about there. And then we can just mask off the piece we don't need. So we'll add a layer mask to that. Let's grab a black paintbrush. And just kind of blend it back in to kind of make it look like that was the original hat. You would take your time, obviously, and do a better job than I just did. But that kind of restores that part of it. Now you can get to the parts that are easier to fix, that are easier to get rid of. Uh, like these little spots from just damage of the photo. So for example, we go here, just one click with the spot healing tool will, will pretty much take care of these. That looks like a beauty mark, so I'm not gonna mess with that. Um, go in here. And I might, well actually that's working. I was gonna say I might patch that. So it's just easier when you're working smaller pieces, you get better results than trying to do it all at once. All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry if I was hiding what I was doing earlier, but hopefully you got it. So if I if, if I if you missed something because I was in the way, let me know, and I can go back over what that was. Sorry, I didn't see that comment until just now. So let's go ahead and just patch that over. And again, I would take my time, do more, do more patching until I got it completely blended in, but we don't have that kind of time in this setting, but take your time. You can zoom in, go tighter, go pixel by pixel if you need to, to kind of get it looking the way you want. I definitely keep the Photoshop files after I'm done. I, I, I don't think I've ever deleted Photoshop files. Because like I, I treat the Photoshop files as the masters. So that way I can always go back and yield or, or output whatever I need from the best image I have. If that makes sense. Okay, so take the time, go in and com complete. Oh yeah, that does not look good when I'm zoomed out. There we go. Let's do some more blending down here of the chin. That looks better zoomed out. And I highly recommend zooming out from time to time because when you're zoomed in, it's hard to see what it really looks like because people aren't going to see it zoomed in. They're going to see it like this. So take your time to zoom out to make sure that all that little patchwork you're doing looks good zoomed out. And he's got something on his lip. Okay. So now that we did all that and she's got this weird hair thing going on here, 
Oh, sorry. Oh, no. There we go. Uh, she's got this weird lip, or I'm sorry, this is a weird hair thing that didn't get didn't didn't get selected well when I did the cutout, and so that's on that layer. Oh, I probably mask that. Just go to the mask, and I just mask that out because it's not adding anything to the story. Okay, so. Continue tweaking, getting it just the way you want. Now, the, the thing that we run into with a lot of these old photos, uh, could you end up by super resolution, by, could you end up by using the super resolution tool? William, I would probably do that up front. I, like, I, I, I would run super resolution before I even started if the resolution wasn't high enough. And I'll show you an example of how to do that. But that's what I would do before I even got started. Um, so I wouldn't do it last, I'd do it first. Uh, and I would absolutely do it, <laughs> especially on images that weren't shot with a phone or a camera that aren't high enough resolution. Anyway, so uh, now I've got all these these layers that like the hat, the uh, them, uh, the background, so forth and so on. And what I want to do now, because we end up with a lot of these old photos that are brown like this or sepia tone color like this, that would look much better as a black and white. So what I'm going to do is go to the very top layer whatever that layer is, and we uh, you'd name these, obviously. And let's go in and let's create a new adjustment layer called black and white. And what black and white gives me the capability of doing is making the photo look more modern as a more traditional black and white, and it takes away all that discoloring that you had before. So, for example, um, the thing I like about the black and white adjustment layer is that it, re it remembers the colors that are still there. So it's just, it's on top of all the colors. So if I adjust the reds, for example, it, it makes a different kind of black and white based on the reds that were in the image. Same thing with the yellows, and you can get like just a better looking image um, by starting out this way. So now that we got that, the only other thing I might do is I might take a composite of all of this, now that it's in black and white, and um, run a neural filter on it. So let's take a composite of all these layers. Command, or so Mac, Command, Option, Shift, E. Windows, Control, Alt, Shift, E. And that will take all the layers you have and make a new layer. So it just basically combined all the layers. It didn't flatten the image, it just combined all, all the layers into a flattened layer. So you still have all your layers to play with, but you now have this new flat one. So I can turn off all my working layers because now I've got this new layer of my composite at work. And then what I can do on that new layer, so let's just call this one B&W for black and white. And now that I've got this new black and white layer, what I can do is go up to and I can try running a neural filter on it. So let's go to filters. Neural filters we introduced last year. And one of the neural filters we introduced last year is colorize so if i click colorize that will kind of like take that photo and envision it in color and uh you so you end up with kind of a a cool modern day old photo and it can output so colorize by the way is not going to by any means get it right every single time and it may miss pieces like it's missing part of his neck here that was like in the light it may miss hands and feet and things like that but that's okay because if it missed things, you can output it as a new layer. So here's the before, here's the after. Uh, maybe his lips are a little too red for because they almost look the same. Like she would be wearing lipstick. He probably wouldn't be. So it got his lips wrong. So in this case, I would just click OK. I'll put that as a new layer. And now that I've got that new layer, we'll call this layer color. Then you can go in and... Um, Let's turn, let's, let's, we've got the color. This is interesting. This is what the color layer looks like, by the way. So that's what it did to it. It, it showed, it only put color in the places where it put color and left the rest alone. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, what I would then do is I would say, okay, we got the black and white underneath and I might go in on the color layer, add a mask. And instead of painting with black, which will remove all of the red and therefore make his lips gray. 
I would instead either maybe use a desaturate or not paint with 100% flow or opacity. And let's drop the opacity way down and just reduce the red. So I can just keep reducing it. And if you go too far, it's going to be gray again. So maybe bring it down a little more on that second pass. And just kind of taking some of that red out. Now that's one way to do it. Let's undo, undo, put it back. Another way to undo it is to switch to the sponge tool. The sponge tool is desaturate. So that's taking some of the natural color out of that. Now, another way to do it is just simply select the lips. And let's use our object selection tool. Let's, uh, let's select his mouth. And now that we got his mouth selected, we can go into an adjustment layer like hue and saturate. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to make a mask. Undo. Hue and, hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we can just play around with the hue. <laughs> well, maybe want to, don't want to do that. Anyway, we can just drop the saturation down that way. So just make it more less saturated and maybe even change the color to something that would be more like a skin tone. Yeah, something like that. And maybe a little more saturation in that area. There we go. Just reducing that red. Maybe I went too far on the yellow. Right about there. And getting that just right. Okay. Uh, this is good. <laughs> Adobe Sunset. Sensei's uh, Skynet's origin story. Cool. All right, so that's uh, taking a little bit more time on that one than I thought I would, but um, that's our here. Let's let's uh, let's show you our before. That's our before, and that's our after. And I just spent a few minutes. I didn't take my time. I didn't zoom in really tight. I didn't really like smooth out this shadow the way I really wanted to on on her face. But that's just in a few minutes of work. Imagine if you spent some real time on this, what you could end up with. All right, so next up, um, let's get to the main event. Let's get to this one. Oh, actually, before we even get to this one. So this one's kind of rinse and repeat, the same, same kind of thing. But I'm, I'm, before we do that one, I want to talk about this one. Where you got part of the photo missing. His eye's gone. His, his 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 right eye on my left side is just gone. But in a case like this, as long as I have another eye, I'm golden. Because if both eyes were gone, then I got to find another photo. So like in the case of my mom where the eyes were closed, I had to go get another photo. But in this case, you have a good eye. You have an eye that's not gone. So uh, this is one of those times where I teach the opposite of what I would do for retouching. When I, when I talk about retouching, I tell people, start with the thing that is bugging you the most. Well, the thing that's bugging me the most is his eye. <laughs> but in a case where it's a part of, or it's part of re restoration, starting there is going to do you a disservice because there are other parts of the image you can fix that will make fixing that eye better. So ignore the eye first in this case, fix the other parts of the face that you can fix. Then when you go to fix the eye, trust me, it'll be that much easier. So I'm gonna, let me show you. All right, so in this case, uh, let's go in, use our same spot healing brush and just start brushing away uh, these parts of the photo where we have the scratches. And again, I'm not so much worried about the background. We already know how to do the background. I'm more worried about his face. So you would take your time and you would go do all of these. Yes, I get it. But that's not, that's not the job right now. The job at hand is restoring that eye. Yes, the jacket. Yes, all that. But again, in this case... We're worried about just his face or his head, I should say. All right, so go go get all those. Yes, you're going to get all that too. I'm just kind of getting it out of my way so it's clear of his head. Now, in this case where it is, um, his lip is kind of involved there. I'm going to use the patch. So that way I can just come over and get exactly what I want. 
Same thing on his chin. I want that part of his chin. I'm just going to come over here and get it. Oh, undo. All right. Good, good, good. And again, under the eye. Let's get all that done. That lip does not look great, but don't worry about it. We'll take care of that in a minute. Oh, it actually worked out. Okay, so again, I know the eye is the problem, but I'm going to get, get rid of this stuff away from his head. Just getting rid of this stuff that's in the way. Okay, so now we've got just the piece that's missing. We kind of took care of the other stuff in our way. You're going to take your time. You're going to do, go do the whole background. You might even replace the background because there's nothing special about that background. Okay, and I'm just getting this stuff out of my way. Okay, so now that I got the stuff out of my way, I want to be clear, clearly out of my way. Now that I got the stuff out of my way, I can concentrate on the on the task at hand, which is his his eye, his his missing eye. Now there's a there's a couple ways we can handle this. Um, we can work on just the eye. Or we can use the whole side of his face. And I'm kind of looking at the glasses. So I probably want the glasses, you know, obviously I want the glasses too. So I'm going to work on that whole side of his face. So what I'm going to do is grab uh, any selection method you want. I'll use a lasso in this case. I'm just going to go ahead and make a big giant selection of all of this. Okay, so just that whole area. Actually, no, I take that back. I'm selecting the wrong side. I want the good side. So I'm going to select this whole good side. All right, so now I got the whole good side selected. Let's hit Command J or Control J on Windows to put that whole left, or whole right side, his left side, on its own layer. So that's what it looks like. So now that we got the whole whole side on this layer, we're going to free transform it. So Command T, Control T on Windows. And we're going to flip it. So just right click on it and flip horizontal. And so that will give us the other side. And now we're just going to move it over. And his face <laughs> actually didn't turn out too bad. You might need to tilt it a little because his... Now, how can I tell if I got it lined up? Like, that looks good to me, but I don't know if that's right. Is, is it too close? Is it too far? Like, how do I know it's right? Well, before you put it down, before you say I'm finished, I can already tell it's too close because look at the side of his head and look at this side of his head. This should be much further over. But before I put it down or worry about if it's right, um, because his head is not tilted, it's, it, like it probably should be tilted more, so it looks more like that. But we, we need to make it look good here, so we're not worried about his head as much as we are worried about this. So in order to, to make sure I got it right, what I would want to do is make sure his eye lines up, his glasses are lining up, it looks pretty good. So you can lower the opacity temporarily. And that way you can kind of see where the glasses used to line up. So I can see, oh, they need to be down a little bit more. And I'm not worried about his ear or anything because that, that stuff looks good. I'm just worried about this part of his face. And the hairline will match up because we're not going to use all of his hair. We're just going to use that little piece right there. So this is the only area that I'm concerned about. His ear is not matching up. Don't care. I'm not going to use that ear. I'm only going to use the parts that are damaged. So as long as I got the eyes lined up, the glasses lined up, that's all I'm concerned about because that's the part that's missing. Now that I got this... <laughs> Uh, Jan's like, you're cracking me up. All right, so now I've got this uh, this image lined up so I can put the opacity back up to 100. And now we're just going to go ahead and uh, hit enter or click OK or hit the check mark to put it down. And then we're just going to use a mask 
because we don't need all that face. We just needed the part that we that we used. And you would, by the way, fix this eye first before you duplicated it, but I just noticed that. Anyway, you would go ahead and grab your mask and then you can use your um, black paintbrush to mask at 100%, not 11, to mask away the part you don't need. So we don't need any of that. We don't need any of that. We only need the part we need. So make the brush smaller. Go in and paint away the stuff you don't need. Now I started painting away too much because I'm starting to see that tear come back. So let's paint that back in. There we go. All right, and that's how we restore, uh, it's at a slight angle, then don't make it at a slight angle. That's how we restore um, parts of a missing photo, is just use the parts that are good and only use the part you need. So if the rest of his, because if you split your head and, and if you split your face in half, they are not a perfect match left and right. They're not, I know you might think they are, but they're not. So only use the parts of the face you need. And that way, uh, you end up with the part that's missing and only doing this. Now, there's another trick because you can't tell in this photo because it's uh, in horrible shape. But in a normal photo, when a person is looking at the camera and there's a light, there's going to be a catch light in their eyes. There's going to be something in their eyes of the pupils, pupils of nothing else. So um, you might... After you, because remember, you flipped it over. So now one catch light's on one side and then one catch light's on the other side. They're not on the same side that they would normally be on. So you might, um, once you flip it over, once you get it in place, then you might select just the pupil and flip it back the other way. So that they're both, the catch lights are both in the same direction that they should be in as just a bonus tip that once you're done with that. So now you take the time and go clean up the rest of the photo now that you, or you would have cleaned up the rest of the photo first, whichever doesn't matter. You would go clean up the rest of the photo now that you got that part. Same thing on the tie, by the way. So see how his, his like this whole right side of his shirt is missing or damaged. So in this case, I fix all this, get it all looking good first, copy this side, flip it over. And then I don't I have less to deal with because it's just a tie. Uh, but uh, where, where the shirt's damaged, use the good part of the shirt. Now, again, his shoulder's at an angle. He's turned at an angle. It's not going to be a perfect match. But you can also resize it, tilt it, distort it, and warp it in there so it does work and does fit. Uh, so just keep in mind that even though a direct copy is not necessarily what, you're gonna, what, you, what you want, but just, just to show you, let's go back to the background. Uh, let's grab just again just a part of this let's say let's pretend this was fixed it's not but let's pretend it was command j pc control j uh, command t pc control t uh, flip over take that tilt it and again that that starts to look right but see up here it's not right so you might need to go in and right right click on this again and choose uh, distort where you might need to distort it into place. Now I'm doing an extreme distort, but you could distort it and kind of lay it down into the area that it needs to go in. You could also use the new warp capability and warp it into place if needed. So just because something is not, um, yep, faces are not symmetrical. Just because you're using one side to fix another side and it's not a perfect match doesn't mean you can't warp it into a better match. All right, and then you, um, you know, clean up the edges uh, to make it look good but there you go so that would be the technique for fixing or re replacing missing pieces of a photo and again if the whole face was gone then you, you, you there's nothing you can do about that it's just gone all right last but not least because we're already out of time oh my god i am so out of time when you do a photo like this we, we did all the scratch stuff just remember no one cares about that white border 
Like that's the way it was back in the day, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, so just remember, you can crop that stuff off. It's okay. No one's going to complain that, hey, the white border's missing. Words I've never heard on a photo restoration. And if you want to put your own white border in, just for nostalgia's sake, uh, and I didn't crop it enough, but just for nostalgia's sake, sake, then go ahead and put your own border in uh, behind it once you're done. It'll be a clean border that's finished. And don't forget, um, they don't have to stay yellow. Go back to your black and white and make it black and white and tweak it to your heart's content. All right, that's it. I am out of time, everybody. So cheers. I want to thank you, and I'll catch you in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to be off next week, and then I'm traveling. So cheers, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.